tell me a little bit more about um, the, the process that you all engaged with and about your time together in the classroom? Well, I mean, there was a lot of preparation in advance of pre-teaching the, the history. Um, and history is my thing, so American history I just love, African American history. Um, so I really started from the second week of school, starting with um, so like, you know, African American history and slavery and civil rights movement. Um, so a lot of pre-teaching went into that. And this was the second visit after the kids they were there interviewing them. So I actually used the city lore um, interviewing kind of guideline. So I uh, was trying to figure out how to keep, uh, I have 12 very active boys, how to keep them engaged in the interview process for the whole time. Um, so we had two kids were interviewers, two kids were scribes, and then the rest were artists. So they would draw um, the characters that Donna Reed spoke about, objects they heard about, or settings. And it kept them totally engaged the whole time. And then we used all their notes to come up with a finished product. So I was very moved when I considered at their age the knowledge that I did not possess of my own history and my ancestry. Well, eight is a magical age because the kids have just sense, such a sense of justice and fairness. So these kinds of stories of history, they just resonate with them and are very passionate about them. So it's a really natural place to start with them. Yeah. Yeah, when we first met together um, back in early September, I start with geography, so it was a great connection to connect the story of slavery with geographically. Um, and then I had my kids do an interview with their parents at home about their ancestry. And so our conversations around that gave us a great starting point from where, where we all came from and the stories we all had. So that was really natural. And then I built in different interviewing possibilities, so they interviewed peers and older classmates, so they practiced those skills before. So how did it, um, impact the work that you were doing, affect the, the work you're doing in the classroom to bring guests in from the community? Well, because my school is very homogeneous, um, <laughs> I, I, have to bring, I, have to, I have to bring diversity in, and it's, it's paramount to me, and I look for every opportunity to do it. Um, and I know Donna Reed kind of felt disappointed at first, like, oh, this isn't our ideal group, and I'm like, this is the ideal group. Yes, yes. No, yes. Absolutely. And these yeah, are absolutely. the kids that need to know your story. Exactly. And, I, and, they, and their story resonated with everybody. And I think the thing that was so profound for me is at the end of it, because the kids made a book of the history. There I am! The stories that resonated with because after we processed their interview, um, and like, what would what would they want in a history book about Donna and Rita? <laughs> um, it was a lot. It was a lot of the common things, um, like where we come from, um, and they. That my kids came up with some really powerful questions. Like in small groups, they first. Well, they came up with their own first, and then I had to help them because they were like, "What's your favorite ice cream?" You know, like, so I was like, let's think about the whole story. Um, and so then when we got to some deeper questions, um, the, their responses were so thoughtful. And the kids really were so impressed with how honest they were with them. Um, they commented on their cards. But um, just the things, like the happiest moments, they realized that's like everyone's happiest moment. That's my parents' happiest moment. So I think finding those common humanity stories was like really profound for them. So what have you learned from doing this project together and um, engaging maybe in a different way with a topic and an art form that's so familiar? Well, I think I'm just um, teaching my kids about what folklore is and how so few people know what it means. So we kind of dissected the word folklore, people's stories. Um, and then it was Columbus Day when we were working on this, so we were talking about whose stories are saved. And so I'm like, you've saved Donna Marie's story. And that's now what could be in a library or it could be in a place, but you've saved that, that common person's story, which has often been left out. So it was just a great connection to history. Um, and it was really powerful for them. So and I plan on being folklorists all the time. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and um, maybe you might share two of the thank you cards that we received from each and every student that I think it will capture the essence of what it meant for us in being engaged in this project. So I'll do one and I'm gonna let Marita do the other. I sing because I'm happy, so they got the theme. Thank you. And look at how they mimicked the Acoma logo. Oh. They actually drew the logo. We wore our t-shirts in that second day. And they pulled that logo from the t-shirt. And it says, peace, freedom, free as a bird, 
equality, music, justice. And there's a bird flying. It says, Dear Miss Donna and Miss Rita, thank you for coming in and sharing very special information and teaching us about slavery. I will remember the two days you came for my whole life. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything. Sincerely, Eva. You know, and so just interacting with them, and for me, to be honest, I think, I know Jess did a lot of pre-work and she shared that video, but for me to be able to talk to eight-year-olds and be one of the first people to share with them about my people's story and where where I come from, where my ancestors come from. That is just a priceless gift. I appreciate you for the opportunity to go in and do that. <laughs> we have a second card. Dear Miss Donna and Miss Rita, thank you for coming to our classroom. We appreciate it that you came. No one has ever come to Indian Landing before. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Can you please come, come back? We love that. And by the way, my grandma is just like you. Your story life is just like my grandma. But thank you. God is good <laughs> from Alani with a heart. <laughs> so there were two young ladies in the class that looked like us, and everybody else did not, but homogeneous state, right? And I, that's one of the cards yes. from one of the young ladies. <laughs> yes. But with that being said, I had never felt so welcome yes. in the yes. midst of a community yeah. that was certainly different from yes. mine. That's what struck me, the appreciation that they had and the appreciation that they had for the gospel music that yes, we sing because we're happy, but we shared with them that through gospel music, we sing when we're sad, when we're celebrating, when we're down, but most certainly, it makes us Thank you. And you brought some community with you. We did. did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. A coma. <laughs> Come on down. You know there are earthquakes, hurricanes, famine, and disease. Now can you see my Lord talking to you? You better take.